Welcome, everybody. It is a beautiful thing to see all of you here tonight. Um, my name is Eric Liu. I'm the co-founder of Citizen University. <clears throat> and I'm just so incredibly moved to see you all here. The pitch and the timbre of our political moment right now in the country um, is one where people are, there's tension, and then the expression and the release of that tension is something that is uh, uh, both hard to bear and necessary to bear. And, uh, um, and, and so much of the energy that is in this room uh, tonight is testament uh, to the latter interpretation that Ben said, that, uh, or, or actually the first interpretation. The latter interpretation was, why do these things keep happening over and over again? Uh, but the first interpretation is, hey, we know what to do. But just because we can be guided by history in knowing what to do in times of division and trial and social fracture and scapegoating, uh, doesn't mean that we, in fact, will do what we know we need to do. And that's where fellowship and the company of others and the presence of others is literally encouraging. It gives us courage. It gives us power to do that, not in isolation, not in, in, in loneliness, not, not in the kind of uh, fake community of social media, but actually in person. And I'm so grateful to all of you for coming here in person. I'm grateful as well to um, what we hope are the millions of people around the world right now watching our live stream on Facebook Live. Um, but there is something special and irreplaceable about being face to face on a conference whose topic is reckoning and repair. Uh, and I want to um, thank, in addition to all, all of you for coming here, I want to invite you, the, you have these programs here, and um, I, I want to start with the fine print. Uh, actually, on the back of the program, you will see uh, who Citizen University is, our team, uh, Ben Phillips, Arista Burwell Chen, Janae Kane, Catherine Sims, Lorette Hanna, uh, and our uh, Truman Fellows, Bianca Guerrero, Hasher Nassar, and Jacob Miller. Uh, and then the box below that in the fine print, it's important to read the fine print, um, is by my lights, and I go to a lot of conferences, um, the nation's best team at putting together events. Uh, and that is the team at Jubilee Event Engineers. Uh, Alex Martin, Sasha Summer Cousineau, who we call Voice of Goddess, because it's actually her voice you hear over the mics telling us to, to do stuff, uh, Sasha. Uh, uh, Mira Bodwar, uh, uh, Justice Beitzel, Taylor Roden, uh, uh, David Verdaki, uh, ba Bob and Ramsey, and Tim Sanders, who is our uh, graphic designer here. So um, please join me in thanking them for making it possible. Um, but I, I wanted to say a couple of thoughts uh, to help us, to help prime us for how we're going to experience each other over the course of the next uh, evening, this evening and tomorrow. Um, and actually, um, to perhaps help do that, uh, in this theme of reckoning and repair, there's an image I want to share with you. Um, and can we put that image up? I'm not going to tell you a lot about this image. I think talk about pictures worth a thousand words. Its title is Beneath the Myth of Benevolence. And it is by an artist who you're going to meet in just a moment and hear a bit from. But the one thing that I want to observe about this image is that it is one instantiation of the task before us right now. And that is not to obliterate the past, but to reckon with it, to look at the layers beneath it, to look at what was always there beneath the official images and iconography of our lives together as Americans. And to be able to peel the top layer back and see peering back at you the history that was there all the time is not just what makes this a powerful and beautiful work of art, uh, but it is, again, a guide for how I would like us to experience each other tonight and tomorrow. Over the course, actually, of the previous 24 hours, our team at Citizen University um, got to host two different kind of pre-conference convenings, the first one of which was uh, our first ever gathering of what we call the Youth Collaboratory, 25 remarkable 
high school students from all around the United States um, who are here with us and, and you'll meet throughout the course of tonight and uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, and then uh, today we had a similar such uh, gathering behind closed doors with something we call the Civic Collaboratory. And in both of those gatherings, the fundamental spirit was one of learning. And I think learning, <laughs> learning is a virtue that is uh, uh, overlooked in our times right now. Learning with humility, learning with a spirit of respect, and learning with a spirit of imagination is something that we're, our team in curating and putting together the program and the people and the gathering here um, have been moved by this spirit of learning with humility, with respect, and with imagination. And what that means and what we really began to hear in ways that were sometimes very soaringly moving and sometimes very searingly kind of awkward or painful over the course of the last 24, 36 hours with our various convenings was that when you do that kind of learning and you're being real with each other and you are experiencing each other in person, that what that means is that you've got to be against something and for something. What you've got to be against is the idea of false choices. The idea that the troubles we face in this country are either a function of race or a function of class. That people with whom you disagree are either evil or ignorant. That politics itself can and ought to be placed into these convenient binary boxes. Being anti-false choices has got to be one of the things that we do over the course of the next day and a half as we reckon with each other and learn more about our history and about our contemporary challenges in American life. The thing we've got to be pro is pro-listening. I mean deep, full-body listening. I mean listening not in order to prepare your rebuttal, listening not in order to spot the weakness in what's being said, but listening for the full texture of both words and what lies beneath words, of what's on the layer that can be presented and the layer beneath. Because beneath everything you're going to hear today, and sometimes it will be things from the stage, sometimes it will be things in your table conversations or in your breakout sessions or walking from here to uh, somewhere else on campus, what you're going to hear is one surface frequency. But as the Invisible Man of Ralph Ellison's novel said in closing that novel, who knows what's on the frequencies below? So listening for those frequencies below, for the pain, for the fear, for the human instinct to justify oneself, has got to be what we do when we say we are pro-listening. Pro-listening isn't just, oh, you're different from me. Let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. Let's kind of make a show of that. It's really going deep in that way. Well, in this mode of being congenital congenitally resistant to false choices and being incredibly gifted at that deep, full-body listening, um, I'm super excited that Joining us tonight, but also throughout the conference uh, tomorrow, uh, is my new friend, Krista Tippett. Krista, as some of you know, is a journalist, broadcaster, creator of the public radio, and public radio show and podcast, On Being. And one of the things we are very excited about this year at this conference is that this marks the start of a partnership between Citizen University and On Being, where Krista is going to be leading uh, two deep plenary conversations uh, that go for the length of her podcast, about an hour. And those conversations are going to be recorded uh, and then broadcast uh, to her millions large national audience. Uh, and so we're really excited and grateful to the team at On Being. Uh, and we're really, when Chris and I got connected and began to contemplate the ways we might uh, play together, 
Um, it just seemed like such a natural thing uh, to do, uh, to bring her here so that she could bring you and us to the rest of the country. This work right now, in this moment, of reckoning and repair, um, you might be asking, what do you mean exactly? Uh, reckoning with what? Repair of what? And I want you to keep holding on to those questions. I don't want to stand here yet with, or ever perhaps, with answers. Uh, we are at a time that I think the challenges of and the historical echoes of are self-evident at a time where well before a particular president was elected, this country was in a multi-decade slide downward, a multi-decade drift away from a sense of having any notion of who is us, a multi-decade process of disintegration, a multi-decade concentration of wealth and voice, a multi-decade rigging, stacking, and completely blowing of games of participation, whether economic or civic, a multi-decade process in which so many people in so many domains wanted to rip that first layer of official BS establishment iconography and imagery and language of American politics and say, I don't accept that top layer anymore. Now, am I talking about Black Lives Matter? Sure. Am I talking about the Trump train? You bet. Am I talking about Bernie Sanders fans? You know I am. Am I talking about dreamers? Am I talking about $15 now? Am I talking about indivisible today? Am I talking about all of these folks in all of these domains who are saying that the inherited structure of our establishment politics no longer serves us? Yes, I am. And this moment of this great push back from the bottom up, from all different quarters in this country, is a moment that we have to reckon with. You can't pin it on one president. You can't pin it on one act. This is where we've been as a country, drifting for several decades. And reckoning means not figuring out whether it's you, 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 or you who's to blame for it. Reckoning means owning each of our piece of it and asking what it is that we did or failed to do to bring us here. Only then, and that is a big then, only then, are we going to be allowed in any meaningful way to get to the work of repair?